You do yourself a credit, mon ami. Bravo. A discovery of significant importance. Afternoon, sir. Care for a cocktail? No, I thank you, Henry. May I inquire of your movements this morning? Seeing to my duties, as usual, sir. Uh, cleaning up in here, uh, checking stock, helping make the dining room ready for lunch. Mrs. Castle can vouch for me. Merci. wire recorder. I'd almost forgotten about that. do you? Yes, please. On me way. Is it true Mrs. Castle has seen U-boats off the island? I suppose it must be. She spends hours up in the tower at the hotel. The invasion must be near then, just as they say in old papers. Colonel Weston has the home guard on the alert. The sandwich tin from the cave? It contains heroin, beyond any doubt. Linda? Linda? Linda, dear, I'm having dinner in my room. Would you like to join me? Linda? Linda? Good Lord, Linda! No! Help! Someone help us! It's my daughter! Please! The doctor was called immediately. Mademoiselle Marshall's stomach was pumped. It was a near thing, but she was safe. Thank God! The trial was purchased for her, of course. Not her stepmother. Yes, she is caught between two worlds, Hastings. Not the real world and the supernatural, but childhood and adult. We have seen how she played up to Will Jenks. 
Was it just for a shovel to build her polo matin? I do not think so. I would advise speaking with her as soon as we return to Sea Drift Island. You must learn if anyone attempted to goad her into it. Whether all of the items we discovered in her fireplace were put there by her? And above all, you must try to put the poor child at ease. She didn't kill her stepmother, and then try to commit suicide in remorse? No, Hastings, she did not. Consult the pushpins on their map. The picture they tell is based on the times we have gathered during our interrogations. Someone lied? Hastings, you may expect a murderer to lie. Oh, right you are. Of more importance is that someone thinks they have told us the truth. Time to unmask the murderer? No, my friend. The smugglers of the heroin must first be apprehended. They are the last obstacle that stands between you and their true secret behind the murder of Arlena Masher. For them, a small trap must be laid. And so, what do we know of the smugglers? Tell me who you think is involved. North. He's no birdwatcher. Excellent, my friend. Yes, Mr. North from London with his criminal background seems an obvious choice. Horace Blatt. Indeed, Monsieur Blatt with the hardware store that is not doing as well as he would have us believe. He earns his income elsewhere. What are the clues to their plan? The color of Blatt's sails. Red and white. Oui, bien. What do they signify? White tells North the heroine is ready to be picked up. Exact. That is when North makes his move to collect it. The murder. It throws the plans of Monsieur Blatt and Monsieur North into disarray. They dare not retrieve the sandwich box from the scene of the murder, with so many police tramping about. So, we know three things which will help us capture them. The first, they assume the heroine is still where Monsieur Blatt hid it in the cave, for no outcry has been raised. Second, once it is in their possession, the safest route off the island will be back through the tunnel they have used so many times before. And third, we have the means to stop them in their tracks. What do we possess that Monsieur Blatt must need most desperately to navigate the tunnels beneath the island? The compass! You have it, my friend. The compass is necessary to navigate the maze of tunnels. We have found the broken compass of Monsieur North. Only the compass of Monsieur Blatt remains. And how can we render it useless? Throw it off with the sliver of magnet we found in the garage. Yes, of course. We return the useless compass to Monsieur Blatt. Replace the sandwich tin and the trap. It is set. Now all that remains before we return to Sea Drift Island is the last clue concerning the magical finger of suspicion. Before you give me the last clue, may I see how I am doing so far? But of course. Present the clues you have so far, and your interpretation of them. If you choose correctly less than half of the time, I will give you an additional hint, along with the final clue. Power was the first clue. The thing is powered by electricity. A good beginning. The second clue was lamp. The finger of suspicion is powered by the same circuit as the lamp. Yes. If the lamp was not on, the finger of suspicion will not point. The third clue, it is desk. The wires from the lamp to the finger of suspicion are in the desk. And the wires? They are very cleverly concealed too. The fourth clue? It is drawer. 
you close the drawer every time you operate the finger of suspicion. Your observation does you credit. The power it runs through the desk. The drawer, it is a logical choice for the switch to turn the machine on and off. So, the finger of suspicion is powered by the lamp through the wires hidden within the desk. Closing the desk drawer closes the circuit to allow the current to flow. Clue 5 is an easy one. Magnet. The finger is controlled by the magnet you gave me. That magnet remained on the filing cabinet, except when you tested it on the device. And the sixth clue, the telephone. The telephone is disconnected. Only to the outside line. It is connected to the finger of suspicion. You have proven your little gray cells are worthy of a final clue without hints. After the denouement on Seadrift Island, we will wrap up this last little mystery. The clue is code. Some code I enter into the telephone. Of course. Without it, the finger of suspicion will not point to the truth. Only he who dials the code on the telephone can make the finger operate correctly. And now, Hastings, when you are ready, we will return to Seadrift Island to speak with Mademoiselle Marshall. Prepare our trap for Monsieur Blatt and North, and enlist Colonel Weston's aid in their capture. It is late afternoon. Mademoiselle, it is good to see you looking so much recovered. Thank you. Captain Marshall, it is necessary that I speak with your daughter in private. I can't allow that. She's still too weak. It is of the utmost importance. No. Monsieur Poirot, I know what you want to speak to me about. I should like my father to remain. Are you certain? Yes, Daddy. Let Monsieur Poirot ask his questions. I need to answer, and you need to hear the answers. Very well, Linda, dear. Monsieur Poirot? Mademoiselle, it is not true that you liked your stepmother. No, I loathed her. She ignored me. That was all right. It was the way she treated Daddy I couldn't stand. Did your father and your stepfather argue? Daddy doesn't argue. He makes his point and then is done with it. But they... they often had differences of opinion. At school, you believed an instructor killed Millie Parsons. What? You and your friends had been experimenting with voodoo? The devil, you say? See here, Poirot. How dare you? Mademoiselle? Yes. Mr. Fell, he believed in it. He got us interested. We knew Miss Porter wouldn't believe me if I told her about Millie. About him grabbing her and the horrid things he said. You decided to dispense justice on your own? Yes. We fashioned a wax figure of him. Got the nail clippings and the hair like the book said. Then did the ritual at the polo mat and would made. A pole in the cleared circle? Yes. It represents the center of the world. Power! Then we let him have it with the pins. It worked, Monsieur Poirot. You have to believe me, it worked. Because he believed as well, Mademoiselle, only that. Miss Potter found out what about the voodoo? She said we were persecuting Mr. Fell. I think she got suspicious herself, because she fired him at the end of term. You wrote threatening letters to your stepmother? I wanted to scare her. So she would be more susceptible to your magic? Yes. It sounds so stupid to say it like this. No, mademoiselle. Children are often powerless to help those they love. 
but you had felt your power at school. Is it not so? Yes, you're right, I did. I thought I could do something to stop her. And I stole Rosman's typewriter and hid it in Mrs. Redfern's room, so she would be blamed for the notes. That was wicked, I know. You created another doll. This morning early, I went out to the monastery ruins and performed the ritual again. Je vous ai battu. Je vous casse. Je vous mordi. Then I came back here and burnt everything. A little later, I heard she was dead. Don't you see? I thought it had worked. Just like with Mr. Fell. But, but I didn't want her dead, not really. I just wanted her out of our lives. Forever. Linda, dear. Oh, my child. I'm so sorry. Mademoiselle, did anyone tell you to take your own life? No. It seemed the only thing I could do. I will list for you the things I have found. All right. The Book of Voodoo Rituals? The key to the monk's door behind which you hid the wire recorder? The stick pin in the hat with some wax still adhering to it? The hairbrush? The melted wax in the fireplace? Human hair burned in the fireplace? Green fabric burned in the fireplace? That is all, I think. But hang on. That's not right. Something? It is missing? No, that green fabric. I have no idea where that came from. I didn't burn that. Do you see it, Hastings? Even as she puts the typewriter in the room of Christine Redfern to throw suspicion on her, someone has the same idea. As I said, the pieces of green fabric that do not match the hat of Mrs. Marshall are a significant clue. Mademoiselle, why did you try to take your own life? After I talked to you, I came back to my room. I saw someone had been sifting through my fireplace. Then later, my puzzle box had been opened. But Linda, you can't have believed, not really, that Voodoo killed Arlena? No, but I knew what would happen. Daddy, I know in spite of everything you loved her. And when the truth came out, and you found out what I had done, I knew you wouldn't love me anymore. Oh, my dear girl, I'll always love you. If you believe nothing else, believe that. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. I'm so sorry. Hastings, we are done here. I am sorry, mon ami, but I do not believe... Well, that's put pay to the compass right enough. It's no good now. Here is your compass, Monsieur Blatt. I thank you for allowing me to borrow it. It's about bloody time, too.
Can you roll me to Cutter's Cove? Mr. Poirot, after your efforts to find Millie's killer, I'll row you any time you like. You need only ask me. Climb in. Cheese is in the trap. Excellent. One more step on me. Colonel Weston must be here to make the arrest. do you? Yes, please. On me way. I have a theory about the murder. What if it wasn't murder at all? It's suicide. I know what you're thinking. I know it's difficult to commit suicide by self-strangulation. But what if Miss Stewart was choking on something? You seem in a very good mood, young man. I'm about to make ten quid, and won't Gladys be pleased? What is the source of your good fortune? It's the funniest thing. One of the... um... one of the guests at the hotel is paying me to help play a joke on somebody. I'm to lay off the island this evening in my motorboat, and when he signals from the hotel tower, I'm to pick him up and run him over to Thurlstone. It's a surprise for someone, but I don't know any more than that. We must learn more, Hastings. Is it far to Thurstone? Oh no, sir. Just a short run across the bay. Easiest money I've ever made. When is this joke to take place? I've no idea. I'm just to wait off the south side of the island until I see a signal from the tower. Then I head into Cutter's Cove and pick him up. The lantern missing from their safe? It is now explained? Who is paying you? Oh, I can't tell you that, sir. I gave my word, and he wouldn't pay up if I said. And what is the signal? Oh, sir, I'm not sure I can tell you that. Where can be there, huh? You do not reveal the name as you promised after all. There is another five in it for you. Five pounds, Hastings. I think you would not be so free with the money if it were yours. All in a good cause. Five quid more? This is my lucky day indeed. I hear you are, my friend. Five pounds as promised. Much appreciated, I'm sure. It's just a signal with the light. Three short flashes. Quickly, Hastings. Consult the codes in your notebook. Choose one that will be the joke on our adversary. Three long. Oui, but of course. Fire on this position? Poirot, this is a rather bloodthirsty joke. Wouldn't you say? When the time comes, you can warn him if you like. Monsieur Jenks, your humorous friend cannot flash the three short lights out into the sea. Why not? That is the home guard code for announcing you have spotted the enemy. Is it really? That wouldn't do at all. No indeed. Three long flashes is the code for no enemy ship sighted. 
three long flashes. Got it. No harm done. I have plenty of time to warn him. I'm certainly glad I told you. I may even get another tip for warning the guest. If you'd excuse me, Mr. Poirot, I have to close up. Au revoir, monsieur. Hello, Poirot. Have there been any new developments? I'll say. What of Mrs. Kasser? She met with certain individuals in Exmoor, then hopped a train to Southampton. Trying to leave the country is my guess. She'll be detained the moment she tries to board a ship. You are watching her associates, I assume? Scotland Yard is on it. Any report on Gideon Fell? He's being questioned as we speak. I hope to have some information before the night is over. What of Monsieur Jimmy Nash? Nothing yet, Poirot. Scotland Yard has promised to bring through sometime tonight. It is time to clear up our remaining mysteries. I need your help. Anything. We must settle this business of the heroine. Tell me what you need. Accompany me to Cutter's Cave. I'm ready to leave when you are. What else? Your men must watch the causeway and stop anyone who tries to leave. My men will be ready. Anything else? We are ready to return to Cutter's Cave. Colonel, perhaps you should descend to Cutter's Cove by the ladder. I will ask Mademoiselle Brewster to conduct me there. Why don't we both take the ladder? Tell him the smugglers might try to escape by boat. If the smugglers try to flee by boat, I shall be ready. If they try to make their escape via the ladder, you will be there to apprehend them. On my way. Thank you, Hastings. You appreciate my suspicions of the ladder. This sea, it does not appear too rough. Poirot, you can't fly to Cutter's Cove. Fly? No, no. Flying is not for Poirot. Can you row me to Cutter's Cove? Mr. Poirot, after your efforts to find Millie's killer, I'll row you any time you like. You need only ask me. Climb in. I say, the heroine is gone. We can't leave by boats, and your bloody compass is useless. I don't understand it. Compass worked fine before I loaned it to... Oh, hoaxed it, did you? I am afraid so. Clever, aren't you? Oui? May I borrow the compass once more? I guess you've earned it. I'll take the sandwich tin, if you don't mind. A few questions only to satisfy my curiosity. You receive the shipments from a larger vessel at sea? Yes. Monsieur North, you picked them up in Cutter's Cave. Yes, once I saw the all-clear signal. The cells, of course. Of course. Red to tell Monsieur North the shipment it was not ready. White to inform him that he could pick it up using the tunnel from the smuggler's rest. That's right. I'd nicked a spare key months ago when the place was still open. Worked quite well for us until a U-boat took some pot shots at me when I was making the rendezvous at sea. Too dangerous now. That was to be our last shipment for a while until we could find another way. The war, it is an inconvenience. You can say that again. Playing the ghost was your idea, Mr. North? Not likely. Vlad thought it would scare off any nosy locals. I thought it was bloody silly. I think that concludes our business here. Colonel Weston, 
if you could hand Monsieur North over to your men, I would like Monsieur Blatt to join us this evening in the dining room. It's your show, my friend. I'd shoot you, Poirot. Somebody stole my gun. Ebian Hastings, the murder of Millie Parsons, it is now explained. The fifth columnist has fled and will hopefully lead Scotland Yard to other traitors. The practitioner of the voodoo has been revealed. The smugglers have been trapped with the goods, as you say. Only one target remains, the murderer of Alena Marshall. Then you knew by now who had murdered Alena Stewart? But of course. All of the clues are now in your possession as well. Hastings, the time it has arrived. The crowning glory of any case. That sublime moment when the spotlight shines down. A hush descends upon the audience, and all eyes turn to Poirot. Tonight, however, this stage, it shall be yours. Some will listen in relief, others in anger at what must be revealed. And some will listen in fear as the net of truth slowly, inexorably tightens about them. Now one thing only before we begin. Do you wish Poirot's help? I can whisper in your ear and guide you, or if you feel brave, I will sit back and let you present the case your own little gray cells have constructed for you. What then is it to be? <laughs> 